Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. We're doing an 8-4 Dragons of Tarkir Fate Reforged draft. Um, if you don't want to know the results beforehand, maybe it's too late, but um, I recommend watching the videos at SeemsGoodMagic.com because I put up, um, a, if I lose in like the first or second round or whatever, I put up uh, extra rounds to sort of mask my performance just as a little FYI so if you know in the future that I'm doing an 8-4 you can go to seemsgoodmagic.com and watch it there and that way you won't know ahead of time if I won or lost all right I think we're just taking Stratus answer I like this card it's very good efficient flyer this rare cycle is just really good I guess I don't I can't think of all of them off the top of my head but Iron Shaman and that Den Protector must be part of that cycle and they are certainly good I didn't get a chance to look at the rest of this pack, but whatever. Taking Stratus Dancer. All right. Passed a blue rare. That's pretty good, actually. Um, six mana, draw four. I don't mind that. Otherwise, there is a Vulture Haven, which is pretty good. I think I'm fine taking a six mana draw four, though. It's pretty powerful. Drawing four cards is pretty awesome. And it definitely pairs well with Stratus Dancer in that I can leave up my you know, negate, morph, or draw four cards. Both of which are very good. Um, I think Vulture Saven, excuse me, Bloodshin Rager are the only other uh, notable cards in here. Stampeding Elk Herd, I guess. Some decent uncommons. Foil uncommon. But I'll take prerogative. That's fine. All right, now I had a few people comment on the epically confrontate. I don't know why I say I know I I definitely know that confrontate's not a word, but for some reason I I like it more than saying epically confront. It just sounds cooler when you're like epically confrontate. But uh, yes, if you're into my videos, because there are some uh, people from around the world that watch, confrontate is not a word. So, for all future references, if you're ever in America and you need to say the word, just say confront. I um, think I kind of want to take it here, but then I have to be blue-green. I'm probably better off taking Enduring Victory. I really don't want to be blue-green. I mean, Epic Confrontation is the best card here. I don't want to take Living Lore either. rather just grab a removal spell that I might play. I like blue-white anyway. I don't have to marry white. Whatever. Ooh, I do like Volcanic Vision, however. A little board wipe. Especially, like, bring back prerogative. Deal six to all your creatures. Bring back a card that draws four. It's pretty good, actually. I haven't done blue-red. It's probably doable. There's not a really good blue pick in here. I, I mean, Zephyr Scribe's playable. I don't like it that much. I definitely think Volcanic Vision's the strongest card here, so... And if I'm in blue, I think I'll I'll likely want it. So, okay. Volcanic Vision it is. Ooh, Youthful Scholar is a pretty awesome pickup. Uh, fifth pick, too. Very nice. Other notable picks in here. Nothing, really. Conifer Strider, Sadisi's Faithful, Shambling Goblin, perhaps. Student of Ojtai is okay. Youthful Scholar is absolutely the pick, though. The old Youthful Scholar collateral damage deck. Maybe I'll make that happen. All right. I think I want a Bell Toll Dragon here. I like it. And it... Ah, whatever. If my... It, it's probably not going to come up that often that I should be worried about Dragon Lord's prerogative getting, uh, you know, countered. There is Stormwing Dragon too, but I think the Hexproof Dragon is likely better than the First Strike one. There's a Lore Master too. But... I think I'd rather, still rather have the dragon, I think. Okay. So we can get Lore Master now. Um, otherwise, Sidisi's Faithful. Faithful's not bad. I mean, it combos with Youthful Scholar. But Lore Master, especially if I end up in red. Well, I mean, I'm not married to either. I'm not even married to a second color yet. Basically, Lore Master is going to work really well in some decks and not so well in others. I think having one Sadisi's Faithful never hurt nobody. Um, especially if I can get some more flyers, I'm going to want to 
potentially have an 04 blocker. So, all right, I'll take a faithful. Ooh, Drowner. I think, yeah, I'm going to take the Drowner, I think, over the Belltoll Dragon. There is a Dragon Fodder, which works well with Exploit, but let's just take Drowner here. We've already got the Scholar, which is pretty insane with it. And Ojitai's Breath would also be fine, but we'll, we'll slam a Drowner. Seems like Blue's open, so that's always a good sign. Uh, best card here is... Guess Volcanic Rush. I doubt I'd want a Mystic Meditation if I've already got a prerogative. Um, I guess Volcanic Rush is like the coolest with Volcanic Vision. Sarkin's Triumph finds me a Bell Toll Dragon. I don't know if I care enough about that, though. I guess I'll take Volcanic Rush. All right. Coligan Aspirant is pretty good. I like it. There's also a Sandstorm Charger, but I like Aspirant quite a bit, actually, and one of them tabling is not that bad of a sign. All right, Living Lore tabled. So what do I do? I Living Lore my Volcanic Vision. I probably just take a Reduce in Stature and likely play it. I don't think I'm, I'm too likely to end up making a Living Lore work. I tried it before, and I, did, I didn't even end up playing it, I'll be honest. I just wasn't that impressed. All right, I could take the statue here, which I guess is it's okay with... Eh, you know what? It's more likely to make the deck than Stormsinger, I think. All right, Glint, sure. Sideboard card. Sight of the Scale Lord, sure. Okay, so an okay pack one. I mean, we ended up with some decent rares in Stratus Dancer and Prerogative and Volcanic Vision. But we're not necessarily married to uh, red yet. But, ooh, is that worth anything? Well, a foil one would be worth 10, but a uh, non-foil one's only worth about 1. So I think we're more likely going to take a Sorcerer, which seems pretty good. Usually is good. There's also a Sarkin's Rage in here, which is also good. But, um, I, I don't know. I like the Sorcerer quite a bit. I guess Sarkin's Rage is pretty awesome with Volcanic Vision. But, I think Sorcerer's just better. Certainly less common. It's also a Calcisma Behemoth, I guess. But, I'm going to take the Sorcerer. I don't know if it's right. I like it. Ooh. Necromaster Dragon. Well, maybe I'm supposed to be in, in black. And an Ultimate Price? Jeez. And a Palace Familiar, which I could take. Does work well with Sorcerer and Drowner and Faithful. But significantly less good than Necromaster Dragon and Ultimate Price. I don't have any fixing currently, and I'm not likely to be in green. Um, so I could take Ultimate Price. I feel like... I mean, they're both good splashes. Necromaster Dragon's a little more bomby, but Ultimate Price is some nice value. Palace Familiar is like the safe pick, since it currently works well in my deck. I don't know. I'm going to take the Dragon. I feel like Palace Familiar would also be good, but... Just getting, the fact that I got past that is like, I feel like a sign in itself. Maybe not necessarily, but I don't mind taking Bloodshin Fanatic here. Starting to marry blue-black a little bit more. I mean, we just passed, got past a really good dragon. I gotta be honest, I'm not a huge fan of blue-black in this format, but if we're getting past the cards, should probably try and make it work. And Bloodshin Fanatic is pretty good. I guess we don't have that many warriors, though, do we? Nope, just a bunch of wizards and monks and stuff like that. Much more, much better for the red-black deck, but three mana three threes aren't going to be bad either. And what am I giving up? Like a Silengar Butcher? Whatever. Really no insane blue or red picks. All right, we're taking the Fanatic. 
I actually like Illusory Gains. There's also Hand of Silmgar. But you know what? I've played Illusory Gains now, and I think it's actually a fine card. So I'll take it here. Hope to table Hand of Silmgar, Meringue River Skeleton, Updraft Elemental. Any of those would be fine. What the? Well, that's good, but we are... I'm not really feeling it in this deck. Could take a Butcher's Glee. I like that probably more than a second Faithful. Otherwise, I take a Skirmisher, which I guess does work with the Fanatic. But Butcher's Glee, I think, is going to work the best for us. Getting the life gain and regen is pretty nice. Pretty excellent combat trick. All right, Cunning Breeze Dancer, but we're just going to slam a Palace Familiar here. This is certainly the deck for it. So, Dutiful Attendant versus Acid Spewer Dragon. Dutiful Attendant currently working well with Faithful. Let's start taking out red, I think, at this point. I think we've, at this point, opted out of red, which is acceptable. So, Attendant, I guess, has synergy with Bloodchin Fanatic. You only gain one life, but, but it does also work with, you know, your exploit creatures. Kind of tempted to take the dragon, though. I like the dragon. I think the death touch and the lifelink and the hexproof ones are some of the better ones. I'm going to take the acid spewer dragon. I don't know if it's right, but I, I think I like it. The attendant has, I don't know, kind of unimpressed me. Here's a pretty unexciting pick. Yeah, I don't really like Reckless Imp all that much in this deck. Or in general, unless you're a pretty heavy Ambuscade Shaman deck or something. But there really is just nothing else here I care about. I could take a Mind Rot. I'm not the biggest Mind Rot advocate. I think it's fine, but I guess I'll take Imp. Just maybe I'm a Blue-Black Skies deck. All right, you know what? I can take a second Butcher's Glee. I don't think the card is bad, and I certainly don't think the card's bad when we might be a little bit slower. It's a nice way to really just get yourself back in the game. There's also Negate, but I'm going to take Butcher's Glee number two. All right, Tabling Palace Familiar is fantastic. We're absolutely going to take that over Shambling Goblin. It's a really good sign for blue. I guess I can take a Nemesis. It's not very good, but neither is a second Ancestral Statue, so all right. None of these cards matter. I guess we'll just cut black. Pinion Feast is good against us, so we'll take it. I don't think this is really a Storm Rider rig deck anyway. Grave Purge is playable, but once again, I don't really think this necessarily is a deck for it. We're in an okay place. So going into pack three, we sort of begrudgingly opted into black after getting past a Necromaster Dragon and a Bloodshin Fanatic. And ended up picking up some decent black cards out of here. We did end up passing a ultimate price, but Necromaster Dragon's a pretty strong bomb, so I'm okay with that. Um, hmm, are we... I don't think we get a good first pick here, unfortunately. So, what do I take? I don't want to take Backwater. I guess I take Will of the Naga. This is really not the deck for it. But, problem is, there's really nothing else. Even if I was still in red, Rage Form is probably the pick. So, pretty sucky pack for us, but I guess we'll take Will the Naga. It's playable, certainly. Okay, so we have Soul Flare. We actually have quite a few Flyers, which makes me like Soul Flare a lot more in this deck. We have a, a lot of Flyers, actually. Um, does it gain any other abilities I can get? I guess not, but like I said, I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight flyers. That's pretty good. Otherwise, Sultai Emissary is something to do early, but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of feeling the Soul Flare. It's also Lotus Patch Gen, but... I think I like Soul Flare enough to take it here. I like the Emissary too. And it's something cheap. But am I how good on finishers am I? I've got Dragon, 
two more dragons that also morph I'm going to take Soul Flare. I like it. I think it's a strong card in this deck. Okay. Skull Keeper feeds some Delve, which works well, but I think I want the Douse and Gloom. It's also Whisk Away, but I think I like Douse and Gloom more. Life Gain, as well as kill like an X1 or 2, is I think better than Whisk Away. I like Whisk Away too, but I'm going to take the Douse and Gloom here, I think. All right, so now there's a Whisk Away. Could also take the Skull Keeper, but my only rewards are... What are my rewards? My rewards for Skull Keeper are a two-drop that trades with early things uh, and two Delve spells that get cheaper. I don't think there's any other benefits per se. Uh, so I could take Whisk Away for that reason. I've kind of got enough creatures already. But Skull Keeper is another cheap thing I can... Attach some Butcher's Glees, too, I guess. It's also a Carsey High Priest, but... Eh, you know what? Hard Pri High Priest is actually fine in this deck, too. Um, I think I'm going to hope to table the Skull Keepers. I'm going to take the Whisk away here. Okay. Now we can get Emissary, or we can get Lotus Path Gen. I don't think I want to main deck Statue anymore. I would prefer to not main deck Reckless Imp, just because... It's not that great of a card. So Emissary is something cheap, which I do like. Lotus Patch in, Flies. I think I'm going to take the Emissary. Let's let's fill up our early game a little bit, just in case we don't table more. I'm kind of good on late game now, so even though I think Lotus Patch in is a better card, I think Emissary fits the current position of what our deck needs better right now, if that made any sense. Um, what do I cut here? I don't need a second Will the Naga. Don't need a land I'm not going to play. None of these cards are particularly strong. I guess I'll take a Soul Summons. Two drop. Somebody might want. This could be a... Oh, I was going to say this could be a River Prowler deck. But no, we're definitely taking Surveyor. I love this card. River Prowler is good with Exploit. But Surveyor is just so bomb. I love that card. Uh, so at least we've got a pretty adequate looking deck here. guess we're going to make it, or we're going to cut. Uh, you know what, actually, I might take the Disdain. I've played it before. It's come up huge for me before, honestly. I don't think I'm main decking it, but I'll leave the option there. All right, I guess it's a pretty easy backwater. All right, table the Lotus Patch in. We're going to take that, and we're going to play it over Nemesis pretty easily. Since I don't like Nemesis and Lotus Patch in with Butcher's Glee is pretty excellent. Just taking it over a backwater, which our deck doesn't need. So we did table a Skull Keeper. I actually really like that. And I want to play it. Um, so, great news. We have a deck full of playables. So I'm actually at the point where making cuts is slightly more difficult. So that's a good problem to have. We'll take the Skull Keeper. I'll take... I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take High Priest on the second one instead of the second Skull Keeper. I've got some reasonable plays with High Priest, I think. Especially with like the illusory gains, I could see that being good. Uh I don't need a rune mark since I can't get value. I guess I'll hate an Efri. Let's just hate against some aggro decks, I guess. I don't have anything I can use. I don't have any vials, so whatever. Okay. I mean rune mark is playable but I don't think we're gonna end up playing it so I only need to make a couple cuts I don't really have any warriors for bloodshin fanatic but I still think a three mana three three is certainly good enough um I don't want to cut any of my dragons I don't think I don't think I want to cut dragons I like that they I think I'm okay with cutting will the naga this doesn't really strike me as a will the naga deck so much and in terms of removal, we've... I, I think Will the Naga is better in, like, a tempo deck. We're more, much more of a win-through-value sort of deck. Uh, which is good. So I only need to make one more cut. I guess it's High Priest versus Skull Keeper. I like that Skull Keeper makes Soul Flare cheaper. But I think High Priest alongside, like... 
palace familiars and youthful scholar could be better. I'm trying to think. It, it's pretty good with illusory gains, too. Not insane, granted, but if they're, well, I don't know. I got to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards Skullkeeper just because a 2-1 can trade early, which I really like, and it does make our Soul Flayer cheaper, but there's just really not a ton of rewards for filling my graveyard otherwise. I wish there were more. It also, Skullkeeper's going to end up working better with Butcher's Glee as well. It's pretty much just High Priest works well against removal spells and, you know, if your opponent has a combat trick, you can just sack the creature and at least net a 2-2 out of it. It also, uh you know, it's similarly to Skullkeeper does make Soul Flayer cheaper when you sack a creature. Plus, you could sack a creature with flying. Not that you'd necessarily want to, but it's another way to give Soul Flayer flying. Um, let's separate stuff here. So, Douse and Gloom, Double Butcher's Glee, Whisk Away, Reduce in Stature, Illusory Gains, and Prerogative are our non-creature spells. And Avon Surveyor is another sort of creature that removes. And Silumgar Sorcerer and Stratus Dancer are good creature counter spells. Uh, this deck's, I mean, this deck's satisfactory. It's not insane. Like I said, I feel like we have enough ways to win between two dragons, three dragons, Soul Flare. But I wish I had some more. Hmm. I guess Faithful is also a little bit of removal. I think I'm going to cut uh, Skullkeeper and try the High Priest in here, see if I like it. Could come up huge if I need to draw some cards, if I'm like missing a land drop or something. So I guess we're running it like this. I think this deck is, is uh, like I said, satisfactory. It's not insane. It's certainly... Good enough to, to win some games, so we'll see if we can do that. Let's bring in the backwater, and do have a couple double black, but we've got some pretty extensive double blue, too. So they're saying 10-6, which would be 11-7 with uh, backwater. I could probably get behind that. But I kind of want to play black early. So I think I'm going to do 10-8 instead. And that's that should be fine. 10, 10 sources of blue should be more than enough to get double blue on turn 3. Uh, okay, so yeah. Stack seems okay. And uh, I did say I'm not the biggest fan of blue-black, but it seems like a okay one to me. So we'll try it like this, and uh, we'll see you around 1.